Okay, diabetic eye disease, the thing to understand about diabetes is that it destroys small blood vessels throughout the body, not just the eyes. Fortunately, eyes are the only place in the body where we can actually visualize those blood vessels without cutting into anything. El elsewhere in the body, we have to cut into the body tissue to see those blood vessels. So we can look into the eyes and see what's happening to these small blood vessels in a patient with diabetes. And the problem in diabetes is that these blood vessels are damaged, so the flow of blood through those blood vessels is interrupted, and that causes all kinds of problems. Okay, next slide. So, give you an idea of how common this is. The, globally, there are about 400 million people with diabetes. This number is going to be 50% more, 600 million in the next 10 years. About 100 million people have problems uh, in their eyes from diabetes. 30% of them risk going completely blind if they are not taken care of. And there are two types of diabetes, I will not get into that. But these numbers correlate with what's happening in India. Here is an estimate in year 2011, there were 53 million diabetics in India, uh, about 3 million had diabetic retinopathy. And that number will go up in 2030 to about 70 million diabetics and 10% of them will risk going, to bl uh, going blind unless something is done about their uh, diabetic retinopathy. Okay, move on to the next slide. So, as I said, diabetes causes damage of the small blood vessels. Here is a view of the small capillaries, blood vessels in the back of the eye. These blood vessels get damaged. Now, what are the risk factors for patients who have diabetes of, going, uh, of developing diabetic retinopathy? The most important is how long they've had diabetes. First five, 10 years, usually nothing happens, or at least we don't see it. Uh, but after 10 years of diabetes, and especially if it is poorly controlled diabetes, and when I say poorly controlled, it has to be controlled 24 seven um, in order to provide protection. It will not prevent, but it will delay the development of what we call retinopathy. So I have patients who are 40, 50 years, uh, they have had diabetes and their eyes are perfectly fine. On the other hand, sometimes I see a patient who is just diagnosed with diabetes with significant problem in their eyes. So it's a matter of how well they've controlled their blood sugar, how long they've had it. Other risk factors, a lot of these patients have other uh, problems, health issues, such as high blood pressure, they might have kidney problems, uh, obesity, high uh, cholesterol levels, they might be smoking, other issues. They will all incre increase the risk of getting what we call retinopathy. Okay, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you some pictures of what we see inside the eyes of these patients as this retinopathy develops. So the, this is a scanning electron micrograph of the, the small capillaries in the back of the eye. These are normal in this case. So when these get damaged, we start seeing initially very tiny spots of bleeding that you see here, which we call very mild diabetic retinopathy. Just to orient you, this is a view of the inside of the eyeball. Here is the macula. We'll be talking about that later. And this is the nerve, optic nerve, which gets damaged in glaucoma. This is macula. And the, all the red uh, uh, is the retina. And here are tiny blood uh, dots of blood. That's a bleeding. That's how initially it starts. These blood vessels break and they bleed. Over time, not only do they bleed, but they start leaking some fluid that contains a lot of fatty lipid material. That's what that white stuff is. It keeps accumulating. As it gets worse, you see more of that. And you see more of the bleeding back here. And this is a severe case. There is extensive swelling of the retina, a lot of these lipid exudates and a lot of hemorrhage. So far, this is what is known as non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. I'm not gonna get technical, but this is still a treatable stage of diabetes. 
The next slide I'm going to show you is where we really develop complications that cannot be fixed easily. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So this is what is known as a proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So let me back up a little bit. When these capillaries are damaged, the retina is poorly perfused, so it doesn't get enough oxygen. If the retina doesn't develop enough oxygen, it gets the signal that the circulation is poor. It starts making or opening up new blood vessels in order to improve the blood flow and delivery of oxygen to the retina. So these new blood vessels are called, uh, the process is called neovascularization. So these are new fragile blood vessels that develop inside the back of the eye. These arrows point to those fragile new blood vessels. These are very fragile. They break very easily and they bleed. So when they break, we get extensive amount of hemorrhage inside the eye in the retina. This is already getting to, to a stage where we have problem uh, treating these uh, patients. And eventually when this blood goes away after six months, 12 months, it leaves behind them extensive amount of scar tissue which permanently damages the retina. This is where these patients permanently go blind. In United States, this is the most common cause of permanent blindness in patients between the age of 20 and 50. Right in the middle and prime of their life, they go permanently blind. And this process can take five, 10, 20 years, or it can happen within two years. It's a little bit unpredictable, depending on what other risk factors the patients have. So our whole goal in treating diabetic retinopathy is to prevent this and fix it as early as we can. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So the way we treat diabetic retinopathy depends on what stage it is. Initially, we do what is known as argon laser treatment. So these spots that you see are spots of laser spots, thousands of these laser spots. We want to preserve macula. This is macula. We want to preserve that, but we don't care about rest of the retina away from that. These, this is a thermal energy that's applied to the retina and it actually destroys the retina and takes away the tissue that promotes new blood vessel formation. So uh, initially, this is what we would do. If it gets to the a uh, point where we starting to see new blood vessels and especially if they're bleeding, we want to prevent those new blood vessels from forming. So they give intra, uh, uh, what they call intravitreous injections of anti-VEGF factors. Anti-VEGF prevents the formation of new blood vessels. And then if they've reached the final stage of scar tissue formation, extensive hemorrhage, we actually have to go in and clean out all that blood and the scar tissue. Often this doesn't work very well, sometimes it helps, but we want to try and avoid this stage of retinopathy. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So the anti-VEGF factors I talked about, uh, I'll show you in a minute what those are when I talk about macular degeneration. So the key to preventing diabetic eye disease is control your blood sugar and monitor it regularly. We encourage people to monitor it at least once a day, maybe twice a day, and control their blood sugar. Now, it's not enough to take uh, insulin or whatever you might be taking for diabetes. It takes many other things in order to control blood, vessel, uh, blood sugar. It's uh, controlling diet, uh, controlling weight, exercise, regularly monitoring your blood sugar and keep all your visits with your eye doctors and your primary doctors who monitor your blood sugar level. Um, and so one thing we encourage people is to get their eyes checked once a year, especially diabetics, even if you don't have any eye problems. In fact, in United States, the government is so serious about it, they will not pay for doctor visit uh, unless the patient has his eyes checked uh, once a year. We require we are required to provide documentation for that. Uh, of course, uh, take home messages, control your diet, exercise regularly, and quit smoking. 
all this is very helpful to slow down the process of retinopathy. It doesn't totally stop it, but we are buying time.